Hello there, I am Ari, also known as Secret Foxfire. Uh, this video is a walkthrough of my first Minecraft escape room adventure map, the Cryo Lab. I'm going to play through the whole map as though I'm a new player with no advanced knowledge and explain how I solve the puzzles as I go, and I'll break the video into sections to make navigation easier. At the end of the video, I'll also get into a bit of the design of the map and share some behind the scenes info. Let's get started. So when you load up the map, you are here in a formless white void with an empty inventory in adventurer mode. So as we turn around, we can see that the void has a door. Approach the door and open it. I get the text, what was I dreaming? Is this a dream? You can hear a zombie. Uh, blindness effect. You can sneak out of here and see that we were inside a cryotube. And in the other cryotubes, we have these two monsters who cannot get out. Uh, this map is, is a little bit spooky. But uh, there's no danger, there's no combat. These these guys are, are stuck in here. That's Kendall. And this is, let's see, uh, Scott. So we are in a very dark room. First thing we want to do is light this place up a little bit. So there are some lights on the walls, some switches. This one has no switch. That one's broken. Can't use that one. There's one more over here. Okay, take a look around. So we are in some kind of lab. Uh, we've got two tables here covered in buttons and switches and stuff. We can mess around with these and they don't seem to do anything. Just stuff here. On this wall we've got these two sort of cabinets with names on them. Taylor, Scott, Abigail, Kendall, Dylan, and Sylvia. This corner is all gross and wet. Uh, by the way, there's like vines and stuff growing down from the ceiling. This place is clearly ruined. Duct access, emergencies only, attach key to green plate. Can't do anything here. Uh, what else we got? We got enter code, then press button. And there's four uh, item frames here. Uh, security door, enter code. Can't open, can't open that door without some kind of code. Okay. Case of emergency, repair code, system, broken item frames. This is because in adventure mode you can break item frames, but you can't place them. So if you uh, accidentally break one of these frames, you just push this button and it will replace them. So that's not a big deal. Oh, a door. Here we go. We can get out. Oh, no. No, we can't. We can't get out. This place is blocked off. There's been some cave-in. We can see this stuff in there, though. There's something in there. Can't can't get to it yet. Come back to that later. And over here, we just have some storage, some bookshelves, and oh, oh hold on a second. There's a there's like a duct in the wall up there. We can uh, we can just can we just can't get through there. Cannot get through there now. But make a note of that for later. That seems to go into that room we can't reach. Let's just replace these. Okay, so uh, let's start looking in containers. Here we've got a chest. There's some food here. Uh, this food, by the way, is just scattered around the map in case you're playing for a long time and get hungry. Volume C. That looks important. We'll take that. We've got code block. Well, that definitely looks important. And compound 42G. No idea if that's important or not, but we'll just grab it. Uh, if we if we if we run out of uh, Inventory space, we can just drop stuff off in a container somewhere. Uh, oh, there's a book here. What's the book say? Security protocols have been increased given the recent protests against cryostasis research. We could all say a lot of very rude things about the protesters and their inability to understand basic science, but we must keep a professional atmosphere in the lab. Please remember to keep all codes secret and do not write them down. Dylan, that includes you. Oh, we saw the one named Dylan before. Okay, remember that. Dylan's been writing down codes. Please also keep both doors to the botanical lab closed to limit the risk of us having to smell those nasty mushrooms in there. Hmm. Link pages, but we can see that there's more. We'll just flip through. Oh, someone has scribbled a note in small script on this page. Mind the rhyme, white bottom blank. White bottom blank. And then uh, if, you, if you're not getting it, what rhymes with white? Right. <laughs> so white bottom right, we've got our first clue about the code. We don't have white, we have, we have orange. Um, pumpkin pie, paper, paper, volume F, C, D, E, F. I'm just going to put these here in order. Assuming that there will be more. Code block, that one's black. Paper, volume D. And paper, paper, feather. I'm going to grab the feather. I've seen a lot of paper around, I've only seen one feather. Maybe important, maybe not. Okay, there's a book on the table. Uh, this is, this isn't an invisible item frame, by the way, so you can... Just punch it. If you see anything like that in the ground, pick it up. Page 102. Phase 3 of the cryostasis experiment is proceeding well. 
Our three volunteers are safely in stasis and should remain so for at least a hundred years unless we activate the emergency protocols. I wonder what wonders, wonders they'll see when they wake up. Note, the door code to the lab has been updated. The black and white code blocks are no longer orthogonally adjacent. Black and white, not orthogonally adjacent. We'll hold on to that as a clue. So white bottom right. We need to find all the code blocks first. Okay. Well, this is all, all broken up, by the way. I hope this this zombie doesn't doesn't come out. So there was something about Dylan. If we look in here, these are actually furnaces. They have stuff inside the black and blue on the same side. Black and blue on the same side. That's another another hint. Anything else from Dylan? No, nothing else from Dylan. But now we realize these all have furnaces in the back. What else can we find in here? Ah, oh, Confidential by Sylvia. This book right here, I'm gonna tell you, is uh, is an important important piece of, of writing in this game. Sylvia is well. Let's let's just read it and you'll see. Violations to submit. Dylan keeps writing down parts of the security codes. We already know that. Taylor stored their lunch in the sample fridge. Mm-hmm. Saw Abigail put away washed beakers without fully drying them. Oh, shame on Abigail. Scott made a personal call during work hours, not on break, as he claims. Kendall is hiding lab property under the desk again. Mm hmm. Abigail wore open-toed shoes in the lab on three occasions. Gasp. Shock. Taylor did not return all code blocks to the designated places. They claim it doesn't matter because they'll be the first one in tomorrow, but it's still a violation. Interesting. Taylor. Code blocks. Scott and Abigail have been laughing disruptively in the bio lab just because they work together on most projects doesn't give them the right to disrupt the entire lab. Some of us prefer quiet. Taylor removes several office manuals from the library and placed them into storage. Dylan has been posting the daily codes for the server room on the wall in the library right outside the door. Interesting. Major violation of protocol. I've witnessed Abigail stash stashing snacks all over the lab. Thank you, Abigail. Now we have food. Why am I the only one who seems to care? So Sylvia is our snitch. Um, Sylvia has been keeping notes about disruptions she has, or, or violations she's seen in the lab. And throughout the map, if you ever get stuck, take a, take a look through this book because sometimes there's a clue in here that might help you figure out what to do. What about Kendall? Kendall's got left of the bookcase winky face. Mm -hmm. Let's just check all of these. Taylor. Taylor was, aha, code block. Black and white. We got black and white. Scott, nothing. And Abigail, snacks. <laughs> all right, I think we have enough food for now. Oh, volume B. Okay. Um, we don't know what to do with those books yet. So there was also a hint about who was it? Kendall, hiding lab property under the desk. And if we look over here where this book was, sure enough, code block. We get all four code blocks for the door now. So now it's time to work out where to put the blocks to get this door open. Our first clue was white bottom right, so we're gonna put the white one there. Second clue was that black and white are not orthogonally adjacent. That means adjacent along the sides. The only place black can go is here. And then we had this clue, black and blue on the same side, which means blue there, which means orange can only be here. And if we've done this correctly, haha, the door is open. The door will stay open, by the way. It is permanently open now. So we have solved and exited the first room. We still don't know how to get in there. And uh, there's a light up here, by the way. And if we look, it's like a, there's a grate up there. It's another place we can't see yet. Interesting. Okay, let's head into the next room. It's dark again. Smells like mushrooms in here, by the way. <laughs> that's not a part of the game. That's just that's just a little flavor for me. <laughs> Get all these lights on so we can see. Okay, so this is, as we saw referenced previously, this is the bio lab. Oh, and there's there's a reference to mushrooms being in here. We still have stuff growing down through the ceiling. There's another grate up there. And actually, we can see through into the other room. So what do we got? Let's take stock. We have a tank full of something growing all over the place. A little bit of water in the bottom of it. We've got this thing, and it looks like almost everything in here is dead. It's all dried out and dead. They've got one living fern there. Um, over here we've got some desks with books on them. There is a cabinet here, which we can't access. No, we can't get in there. Uh, this is a bookshelf. Wasn't there a left of the bookcase? Interesting. Let's keep that in mind. We'll come back to that. And then over here, we've just got more stuff. Let's take a look at the books. So there's a door here, which we cannot open, although there's a switch on the other side. And there is a door here, which we can open. So 
escape room. We should always be looking at the ways through first. So we can see through. This looks like like a library. There was actually something in here about the library. I think. Let's. Yeah, this one. Dylan has been posting. Dylan, the daily codes for the server room on the wall in the library right outside the door. And there's a door over there, and we see there is something posted on the wall. It says 52314. By the way, if you're playing this map on a high FOV, you might not be able to see that. Make sure you set your FOV uh, lower if you have trouble seeing that clue there. So there's all kinds of stuff in there. We can actually read this here. We're making great progress with the fabricator. It took too many tries to count. Haha, <laughs> if only. Sylvia has all the logs for every single failed attempt, as always. I'm starting to get the feeling these people don't like Sylvia very much. But at last, we've got it working. The components must be exact, however, or it will fail. Mutated kelp, fungus sample, X24, string, feather. Oh, I grabbed that feather. Compound 42G. Do I have compound 42G? I do. That's why I grabbed that. <laughs> I knew. Okay. Let's come over here and read the books. Pick these up. For Taylor. Taylor, I'm out tomorrow. You're in charge of the cabinet key. I already showed you how to get it. To unlock the cabinet, stick it in the rightmost barrel, middle row, all the way on the right and press the button next to it. We don't know what to do with that yet. It's another book over here. Personal note. Scott left a note on my desk about the entrance to the old heating duct in bio. Well, this is bio. I hid it in my cabinet in cryo. Cryo is the room we just came from. So that's what that note is, the left of the bookshelf or left of the bookcase. It's full of cobwebs and dust, but totally safe. Should be useful for keeping Sylvia out of my business. She thinks she's in charge of everything. Okay, I'm gonna put that right back down there. We don't need to carry this around. I'm gonna keep this one, keep this one. By the way, Kendall. Always storing stuff under the desk. We got more cookies. Sweet. Okay. Definitely don't need to pick up any more snacks. Anything else under the desks? No. Okay. So, uh, the cabinet. This is the cabinet. This looks like a cabinet right here. And we need the key to the cabinet. And the clue was left of the bookcase. We actually, we don't need this one anymore. I'll just put this away so it's not taking up space in our inventory. Don't need that. I'm, I'm going to drop the apples and the carrots as well. We don't need those either. And we don't need the lab notes. Left of the bookcase is our current clue. Just to keep the inventory cleaned up. So here is left of the bookcase. Aha! There's something there. Now, if you happen to come over and investigate this area first, you might notice... Kendall tends to store stuff under the desk. What's this say? Nice try by Kendall. Nice try, Sylvia. I'm in charge of the cabinet, regardless of how important you think you are. This time, I hid the key where you can't get to it unless you're ready to get dirty, and we both know you're not. So, look over here. There's another container. That's a shulker box right there, but we cannot open it. So, you gotta, you gotta know your Minecraft mechanics here. You shift, crouch down. Now you can crawl through this duct. Come through here, and what do we have... It's a trap door. If I open that and then crawl back through, getting a little dusty and cobwebby in the process, what are we gonna do? Huh. Okay, now we can open the shulker box and there's the file cabinet key. Awesome. Now we also haven't checked out these barrels up here. Dried kelp. Now remember, we, we saw on that list we were looking for mutated kelp. And also there was a specific fungus sample that it said we need. Fungus sample X24. Let's keep an eye out for X24. T A25, no, 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 dead bushes, carrots, and mutated kelp, that was one of them. Kelp, funk, G20, G, no, G69, not the right one, we need X24. Dry kelp, uh, Z4, volume E, another book. Okay, and this one, bushes, apples, X91, it's not here. Okay, so let's look at that note again about what to do with the file cabinet key. To unlock the cabinet, stick it in the rightmost barrel, middle row, all the way on the right, and press the button next to it. Rightmost barrel. If we jump up here, you can see there's actually a button right here. So this is the right spot. Middle row, middle row, all the way on the right. Middle row, all the way on the right, and then press the button. Aha! We have unlocked the cabinet. We now have access to whatever's in here. So what have we got? String. We needed string. 29G. Didn't say refuse. Ugh, gross. Volume A. Grab that. Slimy rot refuse. Refuse. Compound 3F. Duct access key. Now that's something we can use. 
Refuse, refuse, compound 16A, more cookies. All right, we don't need anything else from in here as of now. So we've got the duct access key. So we can't get through here, we can't go through here, but if you remember, there was this over here. Duct access, emergencies only, attach key to green plate. Boom, now we can get down there. Now before we go down there, I wanna double check. Now you might not know you need this, but I know we need this, so I'm gonna double check. What was that code? Five, two, three, one, four. Just in case we need that. You might want to write that down, or maybe you'll remember it. It's not a long series of numbers. So let's go down into the duct. Oh, it is gross down here. It is gross down here. We've got some lights we can turn on. Slime all over the ground. It's I don't think it's supposed to be gross in here. Server room, emergency access only, restricted code required. Ah, so I see. We've got these buttons here. So in order to get in, we've got to put in the code. One, two, three, four, five. Five, two, three, one, four. Code accepted. And now this is up. I should have checked this before. This was closed before. We jump out. Now we're in the server room. Incredible. Oh, we've got so much new stuff here. What's this? Some food, some rot, sample Y22. Nope. We've got fabricator. Warning, excess items of fabricator will be vaporized. Fabricator input, confirm. Uh, we don't have everything we need for the fabricator yet. We're missing that fungus sample. We've got all of these. I guess these are the servers. And there's a door here. How do we get out? Well, if you know your redstone, you know that we just need to get a redstone signal to that door. If we turn the light on, it also opens the door. So now we are here in the library. There's that code. We did it. This light is on already. Nice and bright in here. So we've read this book and we know that we need a fungus sample to put in that fabricator. We don't know what it's gonna make yet, but that's the only goal that we have right now. And we just sit here and have a think. Hmm. Just take a break, take a breather, maybe eat a cookie. I'm not actually hungry, but maybe you will be at this point, I don't know. All right, let's get up. Ugh, let's get out of this chair. There's another vent up there. There's a, there's a light in there. Okay, so what else have we got? We've got a book on the wall. So let's read the book for Taylor. Taylor, I've had it with you taking fake. Yeah, yeah. I've had it with you taking reference volumes and leaving them all over the place. You want the key to the supply room? Organize all six books alphabetically in the brown file cabinet, top to bottom, even distribution of books in each cabinet. Press the button, and the computer will check your work and release the key if you do it properly. Sound like too much work? Too bad. Maybe the time. Maybe next time you'll keep the books organized, and we won't have to go through this again. Sylvia, ugh, Sylvia, I'm getting sick of you a little bit. So. We need to organize all six books, and we have been picking these up. There's six books here, volumes A through F. Organize them alphabetically in the brown file cabinet. This looks like a brown file, ca Whoop, ah, file cabinet. Top to bottom, even distribution of books in each cabinet. So we put the same number of books in each cabinet. Well, there's six books, so that means two in each cabinet. I've already arranged them in alphabetical order. Doesn't matter where we put them. A, B, C, D. E, F, push the button. Hey, correct, keep them organized next time when we won't have to go through this. All right, all right, so this is, uh, can be placed on a block of diamond. We've got a block of diamond right there and we can open this door. Okay, so let's see what's in here. Again, it is dark, let's get the lights on. Okay, do not climb the shelves, why not? You know the first thing everyone wants to do when you see a do not climb the shelves? Just climb the shelves. We can't get through here. Okay, so there's a there's a duct here, but it is locked. There is a, a redstone torch in there, so we can't go through that duct. But we'll make a note of the fact that there's a duct there. What else we got in here? We've got some cobwebs, dead bushes, more cookies, paper, crimson fungus, two apples, fungus sample X24. Ah ha ha ha. Anything else? Paper, rot, crimson fungus, pumpkin pie. Interesting, there's a manual here. Electrical operations manual. Most of the book is damaged and unreadable, but you find a few legible paragraphs and diagrams. Six pages. Now I'm not gonna read through all this right now because I happen to know we don't need this yet, but we will need this soon. So we'll just hold on to that. Actually, we can get rid of these. Let's get rid of these too. We don't need these in our inventory. There doesn't seem to be anything else of interest in here. So, uh, well, we've got everything we need for the fabricator. So let's go see what we can fabricate. Okay, fabricator input. So, compound 42G, feather, mutated kelp, string, 
Fungus sample X24. Push the button. Fabrication successful. We now have an elytra. Fabricator gives you wings. All right, uh, what can we do with an elytra? So right now, we're, we're just trying to escape, right? So there's a duct up here, which we cannot access. It's locked. We need to figure out a way to open that up, maybe. Then, oh, we can open the door on this side. We just walk straight back through, if we crouch. Uh, there's a door over here, but it doesn't open from this side, so that's useless to us. If we go back in here, we've got the duct, which is gross. We don't want to go back down there. This door, which is blocked off, and if you remember, we spotted there is a duct up here. Now, again, you have to know your Minecraft mechanics to be able to get through here, but if you double jump with the elytra on, it puts you into flight mode, and you can crawl through the duct. So we'll come in here, and I can see that there's a way to come back. Let's turn the lights on. Now we can finally see what's in this room. There's a lot of levers. Some lights. Let's get the lights on. Okay, let's take stocks. So we've got a stack of servers or something here which have fallen over, which gives us a handy way to go back if we need to, because we can't crawl through here. The exit! Oh, oh man, we can't... There's a, 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 oh, look at that. We can see the sky up there. There's stuff growing on the roof. We can see the stars. Okay. So clearly there's been some disastrous collapse here. So it's blocking the door. We've got a book over here. Let's read the book. Operating procedures. Due to recent threats made against companies such as ours, security has been increased in the following ways. All areas will now be monitored via closed-circuit video cameras. Security doors have been implemented where not previously used, and old ones have been upgraded. Security doors are to remain closed at all times. Whoopsie, I think I've been leaving the doors open. Staff are no longer permitted to bring non-employees on company premises. In addition, the electrical systems have been adjusted so as to make them less susceptible. Oh, it's a typo. Oh, that's so embarrassing. So as to make them less susceptible to sabotage and hacking. There are three main breakers, and each electric circuit is connected to one of them. In order to enable one of the breakers, the switches for all circuits connected to it must be enabled before pressing the main power button. That's relevant, but we'll review that in a minute. Pressing the main power button will attempt to enable all breakers with circuits enabled. Any switch which is damaged or missing will default to off. Further details about the purpose of each switch can be found in the electrical operations manual stored in the library, which I have already. It wasn't in the library because Taylor left it in the storage room. <laughs> okay, so this is clearly where the cameras are, but they're obviously not working now. Main power, we've got all these switches. Some of them are missing. Maybe, maybe knocked off the wall by whatever catastrophic event happened here. They are labeled with letters and numbers. And we've got another book here. Let's read this book. Where did the, where did the book go? Hold on a sec, where? Oh, there it is. That was weird. <laughs> Note. The breakers failed today, and we had to reset them. After several failed attempts, we finally figured out that we need to activate just one breaker at a time. Do not attempt to activate all three. It'll throw errors. Okay, so that's just a note letting us know that we are... We can't try to activate all three of the breakers in this place. So what do we need to activate breakers for anyway? What is this going to do for us? Well, let's take a look at the electrical operations manual again. Remember, there's only one, one exit left that we have not tried, and that's that duct in the storage room. Security cameras are therefore divided into two separate breakers. One for the first three and one for the second three. Duct cover overrides the switches 1A to 1D. Ooh, duct covers! Okay. So, from the hints in here and the hints in here, and just the fact that there's nowhere else to go, we know that we need to activate the breaker, which will open that duct cover. Now we need to solve the most complicated logic puzzle in the game in order to... Uh, to get that open. And this is, I, 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 I'm gonna take a beat here. This is a hard puzzle. This is a hard puzzle. Um, I made this puzzle and I got excited and I wanted to make it challenging because it's the last big puzzle in the game. And uh, apparently I, I may have gone a little bit overboard. It's, it's very complex. You're gonna need a notebook, a pencil and paper, something like that to write down your notes on. And I am going to also open up some notes so that you can solve it along with me. And we are going to get this solved. All right, everyone, quick programming note. Um, I actually am recording this now for the second time. 
I, uh, I, I recorded, fortunately in two separate pieces, I recorded the first part of the walkthrough and then I stopped here so that I could set up the Word document and I recorded the rest. And unfortunately the footage got messed up, it got corrupted. It happens sometimes, what can we do? Um, fortunately I didn't lose the whole video, I just lost this part of it. So I am doing this now for the second time. I had to load up another copy of the world and I just went through very, very quickly and solved all the puzzles. So that's why my inventory is empty and there's, you know, stuff around that I had actually picked up. Uh, that's, that's what happened there. Um, in any case, what I have done is I have set up a Word document, which you can now see on the screen, and I set up a table where I put in the labels on all the switches here, right? So we've got 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, and then I've got in this window 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. I've got these on two different monitors, so that's why I'm kind of clicking in and out. Uh, I have crossed out the, uh, the, the labels for the ones where the switches are missing, so we know that we can't turn those ones on. So, what's our objective here? Well, our objective is to get that duct cover open. That's the only place we can go. It's the only way we can get out of here. So we need to get that open. And there are hints in these books that suggest that we can do that here by flipping the, the correct sequence of switches. So we need to know because, uh, each, each circuit is connected to one of the breakers. In order to enable one of the breakers, the switches for all circuits connected to it must be enabled before pressing the main power button, okay? So we need to know, and we can't, we can't try to enable more than one breaker, as we found in this note. So we need to know, question one, which circuit is the duct cover attached to? And question two, what other switches are on that circuit? So we can make sure they are all enabled and everything else is disabled. Let's just go ahead and disable everything right here. This is just a random pattern. This is not a clue or anything like that. Um, everything's turned off and these ones default to off and we cannot replace them. We are not, there's no switches hidden anywhere. We cannot uh, do, these are, these are off no matter what we do. So we can't use those ones. So good to know. So what we're going to do, we're going to go slowly through the book and we're going to make notes and we're going to figure out what has to be in each place. And, and eventually it will all fall into place. So if this looks intimidating, take a deep breath. Don't panic. It is a long puzzle, but it is not fundamentally more difficult. It's just got more parts and it takes a little bit longer to solve than the other sort of logic puzzles that we've had here. Okay, so our first note, security cameras are divided into two separate breakers, one for the first three and one for the second three, okay? So there's six switches for the cameras. And what we're gonna do, I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna make one, two, and three. These will be our three breakers, okay? And we know that three of the cameras are on one breaker and three of the cameras are on another breaker, four through six, okay? Those are together and then there's a breaker that has no cameras on it. All right, sweet. So we've already got our first clue. Uh, duct cover overrides to switches 1A to 1D. So these four switches right here are the duct covers. Great, good news. 1A to 1D, duct covers. So one of those is the one that we need, right? Cryolab is split into two parts, 3A for the tubes and 3B for the consoles. These must be on separate breakers. Okay, great. So 3A, matter of fact, we can, we can write that right here. These are the, uh, the tubes. <laughs> cryo tubes, which is crossed out because we can't turn this on. 3B, cryo consoles. Okay, and these are on separate breakers. So we know that. 3A, 3B, separate, not on the same breaker. We don't know which ones yet. Okay, great. Next clue, none of the cameras are in the same breaker as the cryo tubes. Okay, so we know cameras one through three are on one breaker, cameras four through six are on another. That means that 3A, the cryo tubes, must be on another one. So 3A, cryo tubes. So gradually, bit by bit, it's gonna fall into place. 1A to 1B is the cryo server room emergency ducts. 1C to 1D is the storage to entry emergency ducts. So the cryo server is, is the one that we came through right here. Uh, this is already wide open. Whatever was covering that is, is rotted away or broken or whatever. So we don't need to worry too much about that. 1C to 1D is the storage entry. Oh, look at that. Entry. That's got to be our way out, the entryway. So from the storage room, we can get to the entrance to the building. That is very important. This is what we need, and we need to know which one of those is the storage side. So that's the side that's blocking us off, okay? So you can make a note, 1A, 1B, uh, cryos, cryo, what's this one called? Cryo server. 
Oh, that's not the one that we just came through. That's, that's the one that we went through already. That's the one that we went through already, for, uh, that we crawled through the slime. That's the cryo server. So that's already open. We don't need to worry too much about that. 1C to 1D is the uh, storage entry. There we go. It's been a while since I made this map. Sometimes I forget what I wrote. Okay, so this is the one that's most important to us. Security reasons two ends of the same duct may not be assigned to the same breaker. Okay, so we know that 1A, 1B, and 1C and 1D separate. Okay, we'll remember that. Cryo consoles do not drain nearly as much power, so they may be on the same breaker as two of a duct emergency switches. Okay, that's an important clue. 3B plus two duct covers. So it'll be like one, one A and one D could be together, one B and one C to be together, because they're not on the same uh, link here. Okay, one uh, D is on the same breakers cameras one through three. Well, that's easy. That's literally telling us 1D is here, okay? And as a matter of fact, we can, we can deduce here probably, this is probably going to be C2 and C5, right? These are probably going to be our cameras. So let's cameras 1, or C1, C2, C3. Uh, duct cover 1D. Let's be C4. C5, ah, C6. Sorry for the loud typing, by the way. I have a mechanical keyboard. Not much that I can do about it. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So we don't know anything else from that clue. 1A is connected to both biolab switches as well as the cryo tubes. Very important clue right there. Okay, 1A, both biolab switches. Well, what are the biolab switches? That's the first we've heard mention of. Well, we know these two, these four are ducts. These six are cameras, these two are cryo, so these two must be bio, right? We know that. And we know that 1A is connected to biolab switches and the cryo tubes. We have the cryo tubes here. 1A, duct cover. 2A and 2B are both bio. Sweet. So we have 1D and 1A are, are locked in here. Brilliant. Getting closer now. We're getting closer. Our lead technician objected to this, but was overrun at the meeting. We must keep the entry to the server emergency duct in the storage room closed due to recent threats relating to... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. The rest of the book is totally legible. So that's all our clues. So let's look at what we got here. Let's look at what we got. What clues do we have here? Well, let's mark off which ones are together. C1, C2, C3. I'm just going to color code these. I'll try to use sort of colorblind friendly colors here. And orange and blue are usually good. Duct cover 1D. Okay, those are all together. Cameras 4, 5, and 6 are together. We'll use a blue for that. And 3A, the cryo tubes. I don't know another combination that's colorblind friendly. I'm going to go ahead and use a. I'll use a yellow here, I guess. Hopefully, you can tell the difference. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but if you if you have any trouble on any of my stuff with accessibility due to colorblindness or anything like that, any issue whatsoever, please get in touch and let me know. I want my maps to be accessible to as many people as possible. Okay. 1A is on that one. 2A and 2B are on that one. Okay. Well, we know that uh, the cryo consoles, 3B, can be in the same circuit as two of the duct covers. The only two that we know can be together now is 1B and 1C. Do we have any other clues about where they are going? They can't be with 1D. They can't be with 1A. So 1B and 1C must be here. Okay. And that means that 3B must be here as well. That fits. That fits all of the logic. That's a slightly different color. That's going to bother me. There we go. That fits all the logic, right? That fits all of the rules that we have. This works. So let's give it a try. Hey, worst case scenario, if we're wrong, then we'll just try again. So we have uh, the only, well, let's see, we can't flip this one. So we can't use that yellow circuit. Can't flip this one, so we can't use that red circuit. So we better hope that it's all in the blue. And that uh, 1C is the thing that we need. 
Three B. Push the button. Breaker two activated. Is the text that just came up which you can't see? <laughs> because I need to turn that off. There we go. Breaker two activated. We did it. We solved the puzzle. We've opened the breaker. So now we can go back through. Unfortunately, there's not an easier way back because that door is completely blocked off. But we can go through this way and then we can go through the doors back to that storage room. And hopefully that will be open. And that will lead us to the entry, which is what the book said it was going to do. And there it is. Sure enough, it is open. Jump up there. Use those Minecraft tactics. And we're going to come through here. Now we're actually going to go back through the whole map pretty much. See the library there. And coming up on your right is the cryo lab, the first room that we were in. It's a little gross and sticky in here. Sorry about that. You're going to get a little bit of stuff all over your clothes and you stuff. Hey, you're trying to escape. You're trying to, to survive. And there's the bio lab. You can't see the security room through here. But as we come around the corner, sure enough, it has led us to the final room. Now, we haven't been able to see this room before, except we could see that there was something here. And we can open this now, by the way, and go back the easy way. And there's a door here. But this is the entrance way. So surely we can just walk out the front door. Now, of course, of course, it's not going to be that easy. It's not going to be that tough either. Don't worry. Don't worry. So this appears to be a corpse here. We've got some stuff under here, just some snacks, paper, nothing important. We've got a book on the table. Final entry. Seems like it finally happened. The whole building shook. It's strangely quiet outside, and the internet and phones are out. The emergency power system is holding for now. It's tempting to go out there and see what's going on, but I swore an oath, and I intend to keep it. I will not abandon the sleepers now. It seems likely that they will be needed, after all. Their cryotubes are set for 100 years. Two of the researchers and one volunteer. Oh, that must be me, because I'm not, I'm not a researcher. I will stay here and guard the doors. Wow. Stayed, stayed here and, and died, apparently. Whoever you are. Whoever you were. So... Uh, we can't get out the front door. However, there are hole there are straight up holes in the ceiling, right? There's one hole over here. Can't quite. I think if, you, if you're very skilled, you might be able to get up there. Um, there we go. Get up here. But we can't actually get out. There's nowhere to grab onto. However, there's another one here. Hanging down. We can't reach that. However, there's like a laptop here. If we open the laptop. Ah, yes, we can get out. By the way, before I go out, I do want to, I've had this question a couple of times. There are some buttons here. These are basically decoration, and they are to stop the vines from overtaking the whole room. That's why those are there. They are not part of a puzzle. Apologies if that confused anyone. Congratulations, you have escaped. But to what? Is there anyone left? I'm looking out, we can see it's just trees. It's just trees everywhere. Everything's gone. So if you come through here, there's some, some plugs for my stuff. Uh, some information which you can read for yourself. Uh, this map was inspired by a short story that I'm writing. It's not a direct tie-in or anything, but it was the inspiration came from that short story. Check out my blog if you like sci-fi. Um, there's some special thanks here. Jar of Jam gave me a lot of help. My friend Jar of Jam, a lot of help with the command blocks. Uh, big thank you to him and big thank you to Seer of Mine 413 and Jax who tested the map for me. Really appreciate your help. I have a Discord. You can get links to all this stuff down in the description. Uh, so you don't need to worry about trying to read it off the screen. And patrons get early access to these maps, plus lots more. So that is the end of the walkthrough. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're just here for the walkthrough and you want to go, that's totally fine. But if you want a little bit of behind the scenes, I am now going to divulge a little bit of behind the scenes information about this map, how it was made, why it was made, and uh, what I've learned for the future. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into uh, spectator mode. Mode. Spectator. We'll fly around now. We're gonna we're gonna pull the curtain back right away. Cause if we go up here and we look down, there's a reason I don't let you leave. <laughs> this is all there is out here. Uh, my original plan was to to build like a, a ruined cityscape in the distance, but I realized that was gonna take probably months. I, I I am not a fast builder. It took ages just to make this, and I wanted to get the map out, so I just kind of cheated in, just hacked in some some jungle trees just to give you give you the idea. So um, regarding that last puzzle, first of all, before we go down to the rest of the map. Um, I've had people say that it is way too hard and that it is much, much harder than the rest of the map. So first of all, I'm sorry if you found, if you found that, uh, too difficult, that, that is on me. I, uh, I did have someone test the map, but the, the, the people that I had test the map are, are puzzlers and did not find the puzzle to be especially difficult. Um, 
As for me, why couldn't I tell that that was going to be so difficult? Well, I a uh, little, little real life information about me. I work for a company. Uh, we make educational magazines for schools, for students to use. And I, part of my job there is to make the puzzle pages. And I make, I write logic puzzles. I love writing puzzles. I like making puzzles. I love solving puzzles. I'm a puzzler. I love puzzles. Um, the problem with that is it kind of skews your perception of what is easy and what is difficult and what the challenge level is. For me, uh, most logic puzzles are extremely simple and easy to solve. Some take more time than others. They might have more steps than others, but they're not inherently more difficult or easier. And so when I made the final puzzle for this map, uh, I didn't see it as being fundamentally any different from the others other than the fact that it was longer. It just took longer. Uh, so apparently that's very intimidating to some people. And I have learned some lessons about that. Next time I will have more people test the puzzles to make sure they're all at a consistent difficulty. I won't necessarily make them easier. Part of the reason why I made this map and why I'm starting to make these, these sorts of things in general is because at my day job, I am frequently given back puzzle pages that I've written with the note that they are too hard and that I have to make them easier. And to me, that's frustrating because I like making challenging puzzles. So I thought, okay, I'll make my own game. <laughs> I'll make my own Minecraft map, and I'll make the puzzles as hard as I like. So I did want to put hard puzzles in here, but I didn't mean to make there be such a huge jump in difficulty. So that's a lesson that I will take into uh, the next map. I am working on the next map already. I'll talk about that uh, pretty soon. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be very different from this. Uh, let's go down and just go through the map very briefly. I'll give you a little commentary. So uh, to make the starting room where you're kind of in a dream... I just made one of these these white rooms with uh, maps. And then the command blocks are here, which put the text on the screen and give you the effects and put, uh, uh, transport you. And there's just a, an observer here that sees when the door is open. That's pretty simple. Comes up here. I am not a redstoner. I'm much better with the command blocks than the redstone. So in here, um, Part of the design for me that's very important, I love escape room games and I love logic puzzle type games very, very much. But a lot of the times they're really arbitrary. Like the developers wanted to put a puzzle in there and so they put the puzzle in there and then they just scrawl the answer on the wall somewhere or something like that. It makes no sense. Why would the answer be written on the wall? Why would stuff be written, you know, why would the clues be everywhere allowing someone to solve a puzzle? So I wanted to create characters in a story that made that made sense. So we've got Dylan here who just straight up has trouble remembering the codes, and so just leaves notes and stuff written all over the place. We've got Sylvia, who is watching everyone, and comes up with all kinds of important notes, which help you figure out where stuff is, like to look under the desks and to check the, the storage room for the book from the library, stuff like that. So that's why I did it like that, and I, I'm going to continue doing it like that. I don't want it to be arbitrary. I like the stuff to all make sense somehow. Uh, another little tidbit when I designed this is I wanted to make it so that you could always see where you're headed. You could see some place that you can't reach yet. So you're always kind of looking forward. So from the start, you can see really the, the last puzzle of the game. You don't know what it is yet. You can't get there. And you can see, you know, there's these grates. And you can see that there's something outside, but you can't get there yet. And I, I think that's important. Uh, it's helpful game design. It helps you kind of motivates you to keep moving forward. You can see where you're trying to get to. I also tried to use light in a useful way. So this light had to be on at the start so that you can read this code. It also, because there's a light here and originally this room is dark, the light draws your eye this way. So that you think to look in this direction in the first place, if you don't immediately turn all the lights on anyway. Uh, same thing with in here. There's a light up here. I had a problem when I was first having people test this, that people weren't noticing that there was a duct up here. So I added the sign, do not climb the shelves. That worked like a charm. Everybody immediately is like, I'll, I'll do what I want, and they climb up here. But I also put a light in here because that draws your, light, your eyes up, and that helps you figure out there's somewhere to go. Then at the end of the game, uh, I wanted you to kind of take a little tour of the rest of the map and see where you've been. So you can always see where you're trying to go, and then once you get there, you can see where you've been. I just feel like that wraps it up really nicely. Uh, I think it's it's just a, a lovely little feeling when you go through like, yeah, I did that, I did that. It's not a, a hugely long map, but just a nice feeling. And then at the top, you can actually see down in through the cracks in the roof as well. So you can go through and give yourself another little tour of the whole map. I thought that was fun. 
Um, I think that's all the behind the scenes stuff I have to say right now. Uh, I learned a lot about command blocks. I learned a lot about the limitations. There's one, one last thing I wanted to tell you about. Uh, these, this right here was a nightmare. Making this puzzle was an absolute nightmare. I did not realize when I started making it that in adventure mode, you can break item frames, but you cannot place them. So if the player accidentally broke the frames, they wouldn't be able to put them back and the puzzle would be broken. Uh, so I had to have a way for you to fix that. I, en I ended up just putting this button in here. If you push the button, it just places frames in these four spots. Uh, I tried to set it up so that it could detect if there was a frame already there, but that doesn't work properly with uh, item frames either because they're entities and they don't get detected properly by that. So in the end, I went with that. I will in the future probably not be using item frames for puzzles because it's just too difficult. It's too much of a pain. Lesson learned. Um, okay, I think that is everything. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, my next map is going to be set in a abandoned mine. I am already working on it. It's, I want to say, maybe a third of the way done. Still a lot to do, but I'm making good progress on it, and I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. I think you're all going to like it. If you like this, this map, it's going to be more of that. It's going to be more challenging all the way through. It's not going to be as simple as most of the puzzles in this one were. Um, and I've learned better ways to use the command blocks to do the puzzles so that I don't have to risk them breaking or anything like that. Uh, remember, if you haven't played this map yet, you can get it for free uh, on Planet Minecraft at the link below in the description. Uh, my patrons get early access to the maps. They get them a week before everyone else. So if you can't wait, sign up for my Patreon. Uh, I also have game servers and eBooks and all kinds of other rewards for people. There's lots of rewards for my Patreon. Much appreciation to my patrons. Love my patrons. They're all wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, you might also enjoy my tabletop games that I have on uh, secretfoxfire.itch.io. There will be more of those in the future as well. Uh, I've got other videos here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and watch other stuff. Uh, watch me stream live on Twitch, Secret Foxfire. I'm Secret Foxfire everywhere. And if you like uh, weird sci-fi type stuff, if you like post-apocalyptic landscapes, uh, if you happen to like anthropomorphized animals, or uh, maybe if, you, if you're intrigued by the idea of a time-traveling trans character, uh, go read my stories. I am a writer. I am a professional writer. I have a blog where I post the first drafts of all my fiction at secretfoxfire.wordpress.com. Go and read that if you're interested in reading. Um, don't forget to leave comments, you know? Let me know if you like them or not. Let me know what I did badly, what I could do better. I always want to hear feedback. Leave a comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next escape room.